Hello YouTube, Mr. Fox. Um, I was on the website blendercookie.com and I was thinking how good it is with the uh, whole introduction to Blender series. So I thought, you know what, Maya is a bit deserted in terms of online tutorials. I mean, in, if you compare the fan base of Maya with the fan base of, let's say, After Effects, it's pretty small. Um, uh, maybe a 3D program could be Blender or 3ds Max. They both have quite big fan bases, but Maya is, I don't know, poor Maya. It's very good. Very, very good. Anyway, so I'm going to be going through and creating our uh, training series for Maya. So help you guys out. So first one, we've got our interface and navigation. Well, Maya is made up into a few different windows. Uh, we've got our shelf tab, which gives us lots of different options, tools, and it's hard to kind of group them into one type of a tool or device um, because they are all so varied. Um, they're all um, separated into categories. We have surfaces, polygons, subdivide, blah, 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 blah. We've obviously got our viewer. And then we've also got our settings. It's actually called the attributes editor, but it's also got the channel box and layer editor. New to Maya 2011, well, it's not new, uh, but it's been rev revised. Is the uh, tool? It's the tool settings window. If you double click on a tool, you get a new window pop up, and here we have all the settings for the selected tool and you can do that for um, any tool just double click it and that will load it into the window and with most of the windows in Maya we now have a cool button here that just just like the uh, windows restore button we click that we now get a floating window to put it back we just drag it over to where it was we see a uh, small, see a small gap appear, and then release it, and it's back there. Beautiful. If we close it down to get it back, just double select another tool, and that'll bring that back. If we accidentally close down our attributes or layer editor, we're just going to click this button right here, and it comes back. Sorry, let's just show that again. Close that, and it's right back. This button will give out menu, click it again to close, and these go directly to the menus. This is our tool settings quick button, and this is our attributes editor or channel box button, depending on which one you have viewed. Beautiful. So in our viewport, we've got a perspective view, which allows you to view it in 3D space. To navigate this, it's quite simple. You've got you hold down Alt and left mouse button, and that allows you to tumble. Well, not tumble, but to orbit, and that will orbit around the origin because I have no object or maybe a selected object axis. If we hold down Alt and middle mouse, that's going to pan. And then we hold down Alt and right mouse, and that's going to zoom. Now, I would strongly advise turning on a setting in Maya. Now, this setting, what it does is that it will disable the mouse scroll wheel. It's actually an enable tool, basically. Disable that, and that will stop you from accidentally zooming in and out when holding down the middle mouse button when what you want to do is pan. So, we've also got our options along the top. Now these vary depending on what menu set you have. So we have a drop down box here that has lots of different settings, lots of different options and as you can see when you select a different one we get a new set of menus up the top. You can make these floating by simply clicking on this double lined bar and we now have that floating. It stays at the top, we can still access it but now we have it floating, so say we were access, accessing our edit deforms a lot, we just click on that, hold it there, and we don't have to keep on going to the top.
Now, I don't want to cover too much in this because this is kind of an introduction. Um, when you're de designing in 3D, you want to use these orthographic views as well. So to access them, you simply hit the spacebar. Tap it, only tap it, because when you hold down the spacebar, you get lots of options. We're going to go into some of these options in a future tu tutorial, um, but that's just a bit of a heads up for you. Tap the spacebar over any viewport to go into it. We know which view we're in uh, because this cube shows us where we are and also at the bottom here you can see in green it says we're in the side view. Tap again to come out, we can go to the top, front and perspective. In my opinion Maya has the best viewport navigation system. The tapping the spacebar is very quick, very efficient, especially if you like to switch between your views a lot. So, that's all I'm really going to go into. Oh, just one more thing. We have our timeline. Now, if I grab frame one and scroll along, that is, if you're used to editing, it's like traveling through your footage. But obviously, we have nothing to scrub through, so you won't notice any difference, but we are actually traveling through time and back through time. Now we can see how long our sequence is by this box here. We can see it's 48 frames long, but why are we only seeing 24? Well that's because our preview section is at 24. We can grab this box here and extend that. We can shrink it and we can extend it. So now we can scrub along like this. Alternatively, we can edit numerically a value, so we put it back at 24, press enter. We can also grab this bar as a whole and push it along. Just like that. This is our waveform editor. We don't need to know what that is, but basically it allows you to have more control when animating. Here are some basic viewport buttons. We've got here to jump straight to our perspective. We've got here to jump straight to our perspective and orthographics. It's going to give us a menu. It's a hierarchy. It's actually a scene manager. It's called the outliner in Maya. And the perspective hypershade allows us to organize, create, and make materials for our objects. So that's it. Do you want to go into detail about what each thing does, but that's a basic overview of viewport um, about navigating in Maya. Hope this was useful and go and watch part two, just work your way through the training series and you should be up to scratch on just being familiar with Maya so that you can maybe tackle some more in-depth projects. So thank you for watching, Dan Allen, Dan on About the Castle, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.